Hello everyone, welcome back. This is a new lecture in your course Git and GitHub by Adionix. My name is Ahmed and in this section we are discussing our first steps in the Git repository world. Now, in the previous lecture we have created a web application or a website containing just one HTML page index.html. Let's have a look. Here is our HTML page, just an just a header and a an input box, just a message, please enter your name and a text box. Now, in the previous lecture, we have seen that the essence of using a version control system or Git is to track the changes that are made to web pages or to whatever application files you are dealing with. But in order to inform Git that it needs to track those changes, you're going to have to inform the system about this. You see, Git will not automatically track the changes to your files. You must explicitly inform it that you want it to track those changes. So let's clear the screen and issue that command. Git add index.html. Now what did this command do is that it informed Git that you are going to make changes to a file that is called index.html that is located in the current directory and that this needs to be placed in the staging area in the index of the Git system as we have discussed in the previous lecture is the in the preparation area waiting for your review before you decide to finally commit those changes to the system. So let's review what's just happened after you issued that command git add index.html. First, a .git slash index file has been created or overwritten. So let's have a look at our slash git dot git report dot git directory. And as you can see here, we have an index file that has been created. Okay, this index file is the staging area, as we said, the preparation area contains all the changes that you have made or you have explicitly ask it get to consider and also the contents and metadata of index.html were added to this index file. Any changes done to index.html file from now on will be tracked until the next commit command is issued. Now you are ready to commit the changes you've made, let's do just that. To commit the changes to the repository, enter the following command while inside the project directory. git commit, this is the command that commits the changes that are in the index file to the repository. So git commit and you will have to add a message to the commit and later on we're going to learn that this message is of huge importance. Let's see added index.html file. Just a friendly message that specifies why you are doing this commit or what changes have been made to the project to make you issue that commit command. So let's press enter and as you can see here when I press enter a very informative message have been output to the screen. Let's analyze this message line by line. Now the first line here says master root dash commit and then some characters added index.html file. Now this is the branch and later on we're going to talk about branches. This is the first branch of your project and this is created by default root commit. Root dash commit is created by default whenever you issue the first commit of the project. And later on, you will see that this place of root dash commit will be the parent change. Now, Git deals with changes as a set of parent child elements. So you make a change and then you make another change after you made the previous change. So the previous change is the parent and the new change is a child of that parent. Now, if you made a third change, the thir that third change will be a child of the child of the parent change so the second change becomes parent to the third change and so on it's like a parent child relationship that goes on and on as long as you continue making comments and changes to your project so because this does not have a parent because this is just the first comment that you do to your project so it is called the root comment okay then the next thing is this number this is an SHA1 hash this is a shortened version of the hash because if you are already familiar with uh, SHA-1 hashes, it's much, much longer than that number of characters. But Git will shorten the number for privacy and for readability reasons as long as this number is unique among the repository. So this hash or this number specifies that this is unique to this change. It is just like a number identifying uniquely that this change is unique among the system. This change cannot be duplicated by another one. This refers to this and this only specific change. Okay, it's just like the, the, the ID of the change. And of course, finally, this is the 
message that you have added, the generic message that you have added to the comment. You said added index.html file, so the console is just displaying this message to you. Now the second line we have some more details about the change that happened. You have one file, change it, and in that file we have nine insertions. And if you have a look at index.html, you will find that you have made about nine lines. Let's have a look. Okay, as you can see here at the bottom of the screen of Vim, you have nine lines. So Git considers that these, that these are nine insertions have been made to the file that is called index.html. And the last one is the Unix file permissions mode. If you're not much familiar with Linux or Unix, you can ignore this. This is just the Unix file permissions for index.html file. If you issue ls-l for the file index, HTML, you find that it has read write for the user or the owner, read for the group, and read for others, which corresponds to 644 as the number here is written for the file. Again, if you are not familiar with Unix, you should not bother yourself with what this number stands for. It's just the file permission of the file that you have created in the repository, which is index.html. To fully grab the idea of committing in Git, let's just make another change to index.html file. And commit those changes. We will add some HTML of our choice. For example, we will write a header to the file. Let's do just that. Let's clear the screen and vim index.html. Above this line, let's add an h1, and in that h1, we say hello, just hello. Okay, let's close the h1 and let's save the file. Let's just ensure that the file is working as expected. Yes, we have here a header that is called hello, that is at the topmost of the page, right above our previous HTML, which was please enter your name and a text box for entering the username. Now, we want to make git track that last change into the repository. Again, if you want to do that, you will have to add this file to the index again. But haven't we just added it before? Yes, you have issued this command before, git add index.html, but because you issued the commit command, you will have to issue again the add command in order to instruct git to reconsider this file, to reconsider the changes done to this file into the staging area of the repository, which is the index file. So again, let's git add index.html, and let's issue another commit command, and this time, let's specify that we provided a header message. So that is roughly the change that we have made. We have provided a header message or a head message. This has been written. I have just made a typo, but it's okay. Provided a head message. And as you can see here, the root commit has disappeared. And now we have another number here that specifies the change, that specifies the commit. This number is unique to this change. And we have here the message that we have output provided a head message, one file change it, one insertion. Because if you, we only had we only add one line above the HTML that we had before, which contained a header message. Now if you want to, you can also use the commit with some other options than the message. You can add the author. Okay, so the author is Ahmed. Of course this is already done, already specified in the config portion of git. We have already specified the author, but you can override it if you want to, and you can also override the date of the change. If you want to, you can just type another date of the commit that you are issuing, and of course the message has to be provided at the end. Now because of the importance of the commit command and its, and its role in tracking the changes that are done to files of your project, we have some best practices that we need to follow when issuing the commit command. Let's discuss them in the next lecture, so see you next.